Commensal bacteria evolve within healthy hosts. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the ever-changing gut microbiota edition. I'm Julie Wolf, Science Communication Specialist here at ASM, and we'll be speaking about Cell Host and Microbes report that demonstrates uh, that a common gut commensal acquires mutations within the guts of healthy individuals. Now, this is something that people haven't really understood because pe- most of these evolutionary studies within a host have been done with infectious agents. So when an infection occurs because of the immune pressure and because that's not a microorganism that has evolved with its host, there are lots of different um, mutations that will be acquired throughout the course of infection. We have looked at a probiotic and the way that it evolves within a host on a past microbial minutes session, but nobody's really looked at the commensals, the true commensals that have evolved with um, their hosts. And bacteria have a very long evolutionary history with their different hosts um, evolving with each of their um, host species. So you imagine that the bacterial human relationship goes back hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. How well have those bacteria adapted to that host is the question being asked here. One could imagine that every permutation of a possible sequence has already been tested and found not to be as fit or as ideal for interaction as a commensal organism with that particular host, Uh, in this case, human beings or homo sapiens. And in that case, one would expect that any mutations that do arise will not become fixed within the Um, within the population, within the the commensal uh, organism. And so that's the question being asked here. Uh, Do commensal organisms continue to acquire mutations and uh, change their genome sequences? If they do change, uh, can those different lineages live together or do they constantly replace each other? And if they do change, are there particular regions um, in which the mutations are more likely to be fixed? The organism under investigation is Bacteroides fragilis, which is shown on the right. Uh, It's an anaerobic member of the gut microbiome. And on the next slide, we will see the uh, graphical abstract, which summarizes both the methods and some of the findings from this cell host and microbe paper. So the um, study used 12 healthy individuals, so there should be no underlying um, selective pressure due to uh, infection or other type of abnormality. Uh, and they looked at the genome of different isolates of bacteri- Bacteroides um, fragilis, both um, by culture dependent and culture independent methods. Uh, and from those analyses, they first were able to determine that yes, Bacteroides fragilis does accumulate novel mutations even within a healthy uh, human uh, gut, and that these mutation, the mutation rate seems to be pretty regular, um, somewhat regular, and indicates that this is likely due to the mm, error rate of the uh, DNA replication. So it happens uh, with a, a certain frequency within um, every time the bacteria are dividing. Uh, they were able to um, determine that most individuals have a dominant uh, single lineage of this Bacteroides, um, but that this can evolve within the host such that multiple lineages can coexist within the, the host. And you can see that in the uh, diagram on the very bottom left-hand side in which the data from the um, the sequences are shown in a diagram uh, demonstrating the evolution of different lineages of this Bacteroides fragilis over time, over throughout different samples. Uh, it begins with two different lineages, which are coexisting. And as mutations are acquired, they only will outcompete if there is some sort of advantage um, to, the, to that new um, mutant that has arisen. And you can see in this case that the green um, is displaced by the purple strain here, which is eventually displaced by the um, blue strain, but that the entire time uh, the orange strain is coexisting with that other lineage. Now, when they looked at where those mutations were most likely to occur, they saw that genes involved in polysaccharide utilization and cell envelope uh, biosynthesis were most frequently uh, mutated. And that uh, polysaccharide utilization makes sense because Bacteroides is well known to be involved in digesting some of the complex carbohydrates that are part of our diet. They then looked at uh, the, the prevalence of different mutations and different alleles 
in microbiome databases and found that Western versus Chinese microbiome data sets reveal different fixation patterns so that alleles are differently fixed, suggesting that there is some sort of selective pressure. Uh, we don't know what that pressure is. It may be related to host genetics. It may be related to um, behavior or uh, diet of some sort. Um, but there is some sort of pressure that selects for different alleles of the commensal bacteria within these two populations. On the next slide, we'll see that this was interestingly picked up in a number of uh, outlets, including Interesting Engineering, which is a new outlet to me. Uh, with the title, Gut Bacteria Evolved to Perfectly Tailor Themselves to Your Body, is very interesting because it almost makes it sound like the bacteria uh, become fixed in a single um, snapshot of the perfect uh, fit for your body when they're constantly evolving. It, it seems that the bacteria are dynamic within the host uh, under various selective pressures. Uh, in this piece, however, they, they quoted Eric Alm, the senior scientist, uh, as saying these strains of B. fragilis, which are growing in humans, have been in that gut-like environment for millions of years. So the idea that encountering a new host's gut would induce a bunch of new adaptive mutations and that these commensals would still be rap rapidly evolving was surprising to us. Uh, this piece was also released in a um, press release from Cell Press, uh, which was picked up by Science Daily, uh, in which the first author, uh, Shiji Zhao, um, suggested that it has something to do with the selective pressure. Uh, Bacteroidae species are helping digest complex fibers in the large intestine, which are coming from the food you eat. So adaptations in them may be related to a personalized diet. But within that press release, the um, co-first author, Tammy Lieberman, goes on to say that there are other selective pressures that need to be considered as well. And in fact, Tammy Lieberman has a very nice Twitter thread in which she uh, analyzes both the questions being asked and the results and the analyses that answer those questions. And we'll link to that down below if you want more uh, detailed information about this particular piece. Uh, even in that Twitter thread, uh, Zhao goes on to tease that there may be some data in the pipeline about the influence of familial relationships on uh, commensal bacterial evolution. In today's Microbial Minutes, we've learned that commensal bacteria continually evolve within healthy hosts. Uh, I'd like to thank you for listening, and if you want more uh, updates on what's hot in the microbial sciences, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you to Ray Ortega for production. Uh, I'm Julie Wolf, and I will be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.